We are live with Eric Mortensen, representative from Shakopee, Minnesota. And <laughs> Winter Camper, too. Got to throw that in there because I think you're going to be doing that here soon. <laughs> yeah, 12 hours. And and I don't want to take up too much of your time tonight because uh, you got some packing to do. But uh, we have to talk about something very important. Um, let me let me start with my feelings here. Okay, tell me if I'm yeah. crazy. All right, you're up at the Capitol. You're um, you're a legislator. So tell me if I'm yeah. tracking this correct. We have these emergency powers. They originally crafted many years ago. Those emergency powers allowed the governor to cover down for some kind of peacetime emergency for five days because back when these things were crafted, we didn't have internet. We we would have to call back the legislators, and that could be all the way up in International Falls or down to Laverne, and they need about five days to get to the Capitol to execute what they are tasked to do, create laws. Am I, am I saying everything right so far? So far, so good. Okay. And you you, uh, you swore an oath to this Constitution that states this, right? I did, I did. I, I'm realizing I'm one of very few people that takes that serious. Yeah, no kidding. So, um, so the governor of Minnesota doesn't just stop at five days. He goes for now close to 11 months, exercising emergency powers, creating rules of his own. Meanwhile... The legislature in this era of the internet is almost entirely remote and can more than is more than capable of addressing emergencies at a moment's notice. Do I have that correct? You are correct. I think you are probably forty miles away from me right now. Yeah, here we are talking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I want to start out with this. I'm reading this thing called House Resolution One, where Democrats are talking about Getting back to our democracy. Do we have a democracy right now? Representative Eric Mortensen. No, we don't have a democracy. We have one man rule right now. I would say that is the antithesis of a democracy. Is that not one guy no. making all the rules instead of the people weighing in? I'd say so. So what in the hell are these guys talking about? Well, I mean, you look at this. I think this is going to come up for a vote on Monday. And when I saw this, this was clearly political. They've got a bunch of things in there that so many people, that we'd all agree to, and then they drop a couple poison pills in there, and they want us to say that uh, the election was secure when obviously we have a Secretary of State that went rogue and created his own election laws. And the same thing happened in other states, whether it was members of the executive branch or members of the judicial branch in other states. And so they want us to agree to this, and they know that uh, however we vote, they're going to feel like they've got us. So they're trying to back us in the corner. And uh, it's just political games. I think people are tired of these political games. You know, I think it's not just the games that people are tired with. It's the fact that we literally are losing what we know as our system of government. This idea that a guy can just continue to have indefinite powers, and we have the top legal officer in Minnesota saying that these are laws, which is in, it's just asinine. That's not even, that is contrary to the separation of powers. Okay, we're covering things I think a lot of people in our audience know, um, so I don't want to rehash that, although I think it's a point of emphasis that's worthwhile mentioning. What I, what I see happening with the conservative movement is that we just take things sitting down and we keep getting run over. And um, I think if Donald Trump, like the Trump movement was anything, it was this courage uh, that was shown on, on the right side of politics that you could stand up to the media, you could stand up to these the, the political class. Do you, do you feel that's a fair characterization? Yeah, I think that's one of the best things that Donald Trump did when he was president. He showed Republicans how to act boldly. And um, that's certainly one of the things that I'm trying to practice. Okay, so I'm excited to talk about this today. Um, if people read the title of this video, they know where we're going with this. You did something today. <laughs> you introduced something or put something <laughs> in the reviser's office. What is that? Yeah, we dropped articles of impeachment. Uh, actually, yesterday, um, five articles we've crafted. We've been working on this for weeks, probably over a month, actually. And... Uh, 
th these things are no joke. I think they're obviously going to try to write them off as a joke and that they're not serious. But I think when people actually see these things, and I've got a copy right here, not that anybody can see it, but uh, I think when the people see these things, they're going to go, yeah, that is 100% true. He has broken his constitutional oath in a myriad of different ways. Uh, and first and foremost, just by creating law, unilaterally, unconstitutionally creating law. Governor, yep. Which is a power designated to the legislature. Rachel asked, what is uh, a statute? And a statute is a law. So we, we have a whole uh, line of statutes. And the ones that Governor Walls are abu is abusing is chapter 12, 12, chapter 12 laws or statutes, right? And it's so interesting to me because, um, you know, if you read through it, He's taking something that someone, or at least when they were crafting it, would have thought was reasonable and has just completely abused it. And, you know, I think we need to get rid of Chapter 12 uh, statute, first of all. Um, but beyond that, what he has done is an impeachable offense. You know, Trump has been impeached twice. <laughs> right. I mean, like, right. <laughs> the and civility is lost. In the Democrat side of politics, I mean, because that's what they're going to accuse you of and stuff like that. But it's like they've done this to Trump twice, and in my opinion, it's like the what what Governor Walls has done is far exceeding anything else because he's literally making his own rules and he's threatening jail time with like people like Larvita and Jane. Yeah, and they're even changing the rules. So well, that's one of the impeachable offenses we've outlined here is <clears throat> one, he's making law; two, he's creating his own penalties for, for breaking these laws. And I remember when uh, it was up in, well, you were with me, when we saw Joe up at East Grand Forks at Joe's Diner. Yep. He said in the morning, Keith Ellison's office told him it was $20,000 per day that he stayed open. Right. And then when they found out at nighttime that he had actually remained open all day long, they told him, well, now it's $20,000 per hour. So <laughs> they're literally just making it up as they go. Yeah, and, and the actual Chapter 12 says that the most he can really do is $1,000 a day. So like they're completely even not even following that. Um, I was talking to Joe actually today, and I can't remember if he uh, broke the story, so I won't go into it. But uh, they're still going after him, um, which is interesting. I mean, everyone's opened yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him a couple weeks ago, and and he said that uh, they were trying to get him, and they've done this to other people too. I saw they did it to uh, Cornerstone Cafe in Monticello, but they're trying to get these guys, these restaurant owners, to um, sign something saying that. Not only will they comply to the current executive orders, but they're trying to say that make them agree to every additional uh, or future executive order when they don't even know these things are going to be. But they just expect them to say, "Sure, whatever you come up with, Governor, I'll just comply." And I, I think that'd be an ill-advised thing to do. All right, so let's name the articles of impeachment here. What do we have? What do we have? Well, I don't want to get too much into this thing because uh, we need to get it back from the revisers. And I don't want to kind of show our cards too much. Okay. But uh, really what these are comprised of is exactly what I've been talking about and a lot of people have been talking about for uh, months. It's one, the governor doesn't have the ability to create law. He can certainly sign laws. He can veto laws. Uh, he can, you know, enforce laws, but he can't create law. Two, it is um, he's creating his own penalties for these laws. And... Um, Another that we were looking at is, you know, when he shuts down these businesses, he's essentially taking away their property. And anytime the state takes away somebody's property, there's a constitutional requirement to compensate them for doing so. And right, that obviously right. isn't happening. I talked to uh, a guy who owned a, a boxing club, a boxing gym the other day, and I, I, he's had a video that's gone viral. I'm sure people can guess who this is. Um, but he, he sent me an email yesterday and said he's down $850,000 in gross revenue. So that is, that, that is massive. And I just posted an article the other day about someone in, um, on the east side of town that has a pottery business. And she's down in just, what, seven months, $200,000. I mean, these are massive amounts of money that is causing irreparable damage to these, these, uh, these business owners. And, you know, when they're doing these uh, checks, what? last month and then passed that bill these it's peanuts compared to what they've lost in sales yeah i was uh, interviewed by channel six and in, in um in rochester and uh they were asking 
the the um, was it Betsy Singer? She asked, um, you know, what the Democrats will say. Say what Governor Walls will say is that they could be saving lots of lives here. And I go, you know, the keywords could. What we do know yeah. is he absolutely is causing damage to these businesses. We could prove that, right? You could look at their financials and absolutely. see. Absolutely. I, I heard something on the way home today, and I, I missed the front end of it, but they said 48,000 jobs, 48, jobs in the state of Minnesota lost in the hospitality industry. And I, I don't know if that's uh, in the last several months when they shut down bars and restaurants again or if that's yeah. year to going back to March. But that's a, that's a huge figure, and I think um, – what was it? 650,000 jobs, 650,000 jobs were lost in Minnesota last summer during the first shutdown. Right. It's insane. All right. Um, make your pitch to uh, a legislator that might be on the fence. If that exists, maybe it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, my pitch is, I, I guess that um, I feel it's our job to protect the constitutionally guaranteed rights of all Minnesotans. And right now, the governor's trampling all over them. He's got a pattern now of doing it for nearly 11 months. There's no end in sight. And if there's one job that the government is supposed to do, and us as government officials is, are supposed to do, is the very reason that, that we created a government after we won our independence, and that's protecting the rights of the people. Mm -hmm. So I think it is the, the fundamental purpose that we are at the Capitol. One of the things I like about what you're doing um, is you've got a part in your website to make walls pay, um, which covers this and a bunch of other things. People can go to mortforhouse.com to learn more about that. Um, I want to talk about one last thing and then we got to sign off because you got to get, you got to finish up packing. <laughs> Pretty jealous of you right now. Although, you know, you know I'm, yeah, although, you know, I'm doing some cool stuff too this weekend. Yeah. Um, so you plan on, um, also getting us another vote next Thursday to end walls's power, uh, by, by making a motion to hear the um, in walls emergency powers resolution, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And I'd love to do it every single day, but there is good reason to give it some time in between hand to, so that those lawmakers may reflect on their actions of the last time that they took a vote on this issue. So uh, they will have been given what uh, ten days maybe to uh, reconsider their position, and I certainly hope that. What do we need? Four or five DFL lawmakers to go ahead and, and realize the error of their ways and decide with the people of Minnesota and, and do what I've been asking people to do the whole time is trust Minnesotans. We can trust Minnesotans to manage their own lives, right. their own decisions, but the governor just refuses to do it. Right. He doesn't. He, his decrees are so great. He knows all. He's all knowing, right? <laughs> yeah. There is a pattern in the Capitol of people who think that they know best. And uh, if everybody just listened to them, then everybody would be better off. But I would sooner put more freedom in the hands of the people of Minnesota than more power in the hands of bureaucrats. And that's what the Constitution says. So if I could summarize what you are saying on your website, Make Walls Pay, is first of all, you got to stop. you got to stop what he's doing, and you've got right. to end his emergency powers. And right now it's about four votes shy of passing in the Minnesota House and then assuming the Senate's going to pass it, it's in Republican hands. Then you want to... Make sure that if they were ever to do this again in the future, they don't get paid, right? Yeah. You know, if the governor is going to divide the, the state based on essential and non-essential, if he's going to mandate taking away your paycheck, then I think it's only fair that we take away his paycheck. So I've got a bill. It's House File 126 that does just that. I love that. And then lastly, impeach the guy because what he has done is so extreme and so unconstitutional that he's violated our supreme law. And therefore, uh, to impeach him and then convict him, which would be the Senate's function, and then he's out of office. Yeah, yeah, that is the plan. We need to first stop what he's doing. Second, make sure if anybody ever does it again that they don't get paid until they bring an end to it. And, and my bill doesn't allow back pay either. I think I love uh, that supporter <laughs> came up with that idea, and I thought that's genius because um, if all of a sudden they just get big some lump sum of money at the end, then. They still haven't learned a lesson. Right. And we don't get a lump sum money at the end when they allow us to reopen our businesses and then go right. back to work. And then ultimately uh, impeach him for his uh, unconstitutional actions. What is wrong with your uh, phone right now? What do you, do you have? Oh, like, you like noticing? A, yeah, you got a makeshift. <laughs> not exactly. I'm not exactly in some high price uh, AV <laughs> studio here. It's uh, a rickety <laughs> uh, a tripod. I used to use a piece of wood. 
So this is quite the upgrade from a, from a two by two. But well, you need to join the political class. They'll they'll take care of all your needs. Now Susan <laughs> right. says Susan says the craziest thing, and we'll leave it on this. She says, "Jake, run for governor." What do you think about that, Morton? Oh, uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't dodge a deployment. So that's what me and the oh, current governor know, don't have in common. I, I volunteered to go over. Uh, I could do a whole segment on that. All right. Well, Mort, we really appreciate what you're doing for us up at the Capitol. Um, we usually read a little bit more comments, but I'm trying to be more respectful of your time tonight. Um, it's 8 o'clock, so it's pretty late. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate it, and I know I saw a lot of comments. People are appreciating it, especially your biggest cheerleader, Brad Ganser, over there. So... Uh, thank you very much on behalf of all the people at Action for Liberty, North Star Liberty Alliance, people, I think Alpha News is going to be sharing this feed too, so people that are following you. What's your last word for the night? Uh, well, I, I guess I'd say I appreciate the positivity. I get a lot of positive message. I think our messages, I've gotten, I think, 27 voicemails in my legislative office, and 25 have been saying thank you, so... Uh, that means a world to me, so um, I really appreciate that because the target that is getting put on my back, but I'm kind of putting it on myself, on my own back, <laughs> is only getting bigger. So uh, the positivity is, is very much appreciated, so thanks, everybody. Yeah, no one feels sorry for him. He's actually causing it himself. <laughs> yeah. But that's what you got to do. you got to take a couple arrows. All right, t thank you very much, Morton. You have a good time this weekend. Yeah, thanks, man. We'll see you. Take care.